Yo, 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 what up? Um, today, we're at my buddy's uh, farm uh, right outside Som Sanuk. Um, he's got an awesome place, so i um, here to help him do some, some work around. I'll give you a tour of what his farm is like. Um, his specialty is cashews. So um, in case you didn't know it actually, they're grown on trees. This is what some of his trees look like. Cashews are like a, a nut, is really what you want. But they come on, a, on an apple. Oh, oh, here he is. So this is my buddy Mendez. Hello, hello. We are taking a uh, tour of his farm today and uh, helping out with, with chopping some wood. We're doing some wood. That's what I like to hear. Make some beer, and, cider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So stay tuned and uh, let's do it to it. Let's do it. Let's collect some collecting some apples. Let's collect some apples and then we go to that and then you know like we show the fermentation. Okay. And then we show the maybe we go up a little bit so it's not it's not fast enough. And then we go see the cider fermentation. Cool. And here we're doing the let them dry for now. Oh well, so this is dry for a couple of days and We'll show you guys in a second where like it, we'll show you the apple and then these nuts sit on the outside of the apple and you pull them off and that's what you eat. You got these nuts, dry them for about two, three days until they're really dry, sun dry. And then uh, after we steam it, it has a very serious uh, acid liquid in it. So it actually uh, can burn your fingers and all. So you have to be careful when you do it, which is why it makes it so expensive. And then you crack it open, a uh, full here, obviously, goggles and all. And then that's where the expensive nut is. Damn. Yeah. Okay. And Mendez has a, uh, a restaurant down in Patia. Yeah. And so a lot of the, the produce is grown up on this farm. So um, then it gets shipped down to the southern part of Thailand and makes its way to the dinner table. Yep. A good one. So that's a cashew. Oh shoot, came right off. Perfect. This is a cashew apple, and there's the nut on the outside. Yeah. So you take that. First thing is to take off the nut. We separate both. The apple. We these ones are good ones, so they're nice and crispy. When they're nice and crispy, we can make cider of it. We'll show that in a bit. And if they're a little you know, if they started to, uh, what do you call it, uh, sort of like get a little mushy. Okay, whatever. start when they start to rot out. Correct, we're using them for uh, alcohol, so we're just distilling it, and you make that, you know, the cashew alcohol. So really, there's no waste being produced in this case. Everything, every aspect gets used, and, um, you know. We have to collect them every day, because if they're on the... They're on the floor more than a day, then they start to uh, bruise and... Yeah, correct. And then you can't use it. So you can collect it every single day. It's a drop every day, you know? So he collected it yesterday, right? So oh, yeah. You have them again every day. make alcohol with and then the nice and crispy ones we can make cider with yeah you got the different colors so you got these nice ones these red ones oh yeah they're a bit more sweet so is this like a different like type of uh, no, cashew it's the tree same. It's it's exactly still the same the same you can see here there's a nice red, red one. one here um, and they are in the same tree this is a very beautiful apple. Yeah. Comes right off. It's not very good to eat, but I think the juice is really good. Yeah, it's the thing with cashews is, um, like, 
prior to this, I always just thought cashew is just a nut and didn't really think that there's an apple to it. <laughs> yeah, no one knows. Yeah. No one knows. And uh, the problem is in most places, the apple is just thrown away. It's a waste product. Mm. So we're trying to use everything, right? In right. India, it's very famous, you have the alcohol. So that's what we're trying to do here. Mm. We're trying to distill it ourselves. Can't go wrong with alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Still better than the alcohol they drink up here, huh? So yeah. It's more healthy. It's got vitamin. I mean, if you make a cider, it's got vitamin C in it. Okay. It's like in any other. This is a very, actually, funny enough, if most people don't know this, the cashew apple is one of the most nutritious fruits. Okay. It's more nutritious than an actual, like the normal apples that we know. Well, so you yeah. make a cider out of this. If it tastes any good, it's got a lot of. Uh, Positive nutrients in it. Give you everything you need, plus a buzz. That's it. It's funny because you have the nut first, and the nut is already pretty far. You know, if you see, if you look at it, right? If you look at kind of, it doesn't get any bigger. I mean, this is kind of how big it gets, right? So you've got the nut, and then the apple grows much later. So you've got the nut already fully developed, and the apple comes much later. So these are lemon trees. These are going to be some nice lemon trees, yeah. How long does it take for them to grow until like they're able to start to harvesting? Bear fruit, probably two years. Okay. Yeah, they need sufficient water. Two years. Two years. Yeah. So we put them up here because there's not, when it rains, the water runs off. So it's not, uh, they don't like uh, what we call wet feet. You know, they don't okay. want to have wet roots all the time. So. It's okay if it's moist, but it shouldn't be uh, hmm. wet, as per se. Okay. So we put them up here, uh, and this is all. This is just the chicken, chicken shit basically that we collect from from the chicken house, and that's super fertilizer. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the chicken house. Yeah. Chicken Island. Chicken Island. Today we had a massive snake. I don't know how it came up. Didn't eat any chicken, but he went up and ate some reds. Damn. Good. Yeah. That was about a two meter snake today. Damn. Was it a was it was it, a, was it a, like a constrictor or was it venomous? It was venomous. Damn. But, uh... <laughs> Do the rats bother the chickens? No. Okay. In fact, uh, chickens are more likely. To so this be... is a beautiful. Chicken. The oh. chickens are more likely to eat the babies. Baby okay. rats, so when oh, there's babies, okay. the chickens uh, run after them and get them. Okay. So this is a really nice tree. You see this tree is close to the... So this, this area is always filled with water in rainy season, so which means the soil is actually here more moist. Hmm. So this tree here is it's a beautiful, uh, it's got a lot of fruit. So if, if you know if you had enough sufficient water, um, you could bear lots of, lots of fruit. By the time they get eight years, you'll be able to get about 20 kilos off mm -hmm. one tree. So this tree looks already good, but this is only four years, right? Wow. By the time they be eight, they're mostly touching each other. So that's why you have the gaps in between. Oh, wow. But you see, some are really small still, some are already pretty big. And the thing with cashew is it's very easy to, uh, you don't, it needs basically no care. Right? Okay. You trim it once a year and you water it for the first six months or you, you know, you put them in at the rainy season and you don't, you don't irrigate at all. Damn. And then that's it. You know, it's really super easy. That's awesome. So there's nothing you have to do with it. Versus, Low maintenance. Exactly, versus other crop or anything else that they're farming up here. You know, it's very labor intensive. That's so awesome. Cashew, is, cashew will be labor intensive once you harvest, but yeah. the tree itself the tree, is super. That's awesome. And it's cheap because you don't need to irrigate, right? So you don't need water other than whatever the season you have. So these will eventually grow out and almost be touching one another? They will, yeah, they will be probably touching wow. each other. I mean, you saw the tree up there, it's a pretty big one. We'll yeah. have them on both sides. Yeah. And they go more wide, then they go high. They okay. They're not that tall, but they're very wide. See this tree here, it's funny, because that's a very young tree. Uh, they're all the same age, but it's a very small tree. But look how full it is. I mean, it's full yeah. of nuts. Yeah. Completely full, but no apples. It's interesting how that works. I mean, once again, I always just thought cashew was just a nut. Never thought about the apple in yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah, 
So the nut forms and then the apple forms after. But yeah, this, you see, I mean, this is a good, what do you think, four meters of, uh, deep? This was done actually to prevent predators from getting in. Okay. So we have a lot of dogs ourselves and there's a lot of dogs in the area. But then, obviously it doesn't work for snakes as we saw this morning. But yeah. the idea was to make sure that most natural predators wouldn't be able to get in. Okay. There's a lot of wild cats as well. Okay. And once, you know, we're doing it for, for chicken eggs. So chicken eggs, you know, to get the best eggs, chickens need to have a peaceful environment that it can lay and not uh, not be disturbed. So yeah. Much. So if you have dogs running around, you know, on the outside, uh, they will all go crazy. So yeah, I can imagine. Built all of this, dogs wouldn't be able to come here. And so now we are on Chicken Island. So we feed them very organically. They do have additional feed. We do give them feed, obviously. Um, but they get a lot of, as you can see here, this is all the leftover, a lot of mussels, snails, Ooh. a lot of compost, a lot of green stuff, vegetables, anything that is usually waste product on a farm, we can, uh, we can give them and they will eat it. Pretty much everything. Wow. Shells, very good for calcium. So these ones, these uh, snails, where is it? Did I just kill these snails? They love it. And that's a perfect uh, form of calcium for them, for the eggshell. Wow. Okay. So this is really good. They eat that. Damn, so they eat literally the shell <laughs> itself. A chicken eats pretty much everything. That's I awesome. I mean, it's a waste. Uh, you know, at the end of it, they would eat any waste. Natural waste, right? And yeah. Uh, so compost, if you had a compost, we were... We were looking at whether we want to do a compost or we want to do give it to our chickens. Because mm. you can do either. You can do only one, right? You're going to make soil, or are you going to give it to chickens? Yeah. So we decided to give it to the chickens. Yeah. The yeah, compost is like people like at least from reading online, people get very intricate with it in terms yeah. of what they're putting in. So like bones, like you're not even. They don't recommend putting fish bones or, or any sort of bones in compost. Yeah. Just because it'll draw in rodents, meat. So I suppose it's probably just easier to give it to chickens. Yeah. We just throw it here. I mean, if you if we have we have a big bucket. Once that's full, by the time it's filled on top, you usually have maggots in it. But they love the maggots, so you just throw the whole thing here and they eat it. That's awesome. And it doesn't take a day and it's all gone. So this is the inside of the chicken coop. And unfortunately the GoPro had cut out as he was talking. It's starting to overheat. Um, but this place will fit, what, 800 chickens comfortably? Could be, yeah. But we, uh, yeah, we're putting in about 200 now. So we're, I think we'll max at about 300. So that would be enough. Yeah. Because I want it to be, you see the, you know, the logs and all, I want it to be more of a natural habitat, at least a little bit. You know? Yeah. They can go out, they can come in, it's very comfortable. They've got all these little houses where they can lay and uh, for us it's important that it's as close to nature as possible. <laughs> Play with the swing. <laughs> That's a green layer, that one that just went out. How many different breeds do you have in here? Uh, I think seven. Seven different breeds. And then there's a couple of hybrids that we crossed ourselves. Okay. So this is actually, this one here is an ice bar, but it's a crossed one. Okay. Ice bar are Swedish, Swedish hens. They're relatively small, uh, but they lay green. So okay. they lay beautiful oh, green eggs. Oh, green eggs. Okay. And then you got, that one is a green layer, the one that just come in now. And you got these ones here. So the dark ones are all, they're all ice bar mix. Wow. Yeah, and this is the babies, we keep them here. Oh yeah. So these guys are actually getting vaccinated today. They once, literally getting vaccinated. Once, yeah, once they're vaccinated, we take them out. So these are the baby Orpingtons. Those are small ones. They'll be very fluffy like that one there. So that's the same. Yeah. So like it, they're coming out today. And then we got some new, we have a new breed here. Yeah, a sister breed of that one. It's right here. Laying in here. Okay. Uh, those, new things, those bastards, they shouldn't go up here, but they are. They like laying where they shouldn't be laying. Huh. 
These are young ones, so these were just, uh, these are very young early layers, first month of laying, so they're very small. But generally when you have, when you, you know, they can roam around anywhere they want and uh, they eat organically. This is an ice bar, so it's, if you, I don't know if you can see this, but it's green okay. compared oh. to this. It's kind of wow. a greenish, bluish, turquoise egg, so this is the ice bar. These are actually pretty good nests, you know, the roll out nest so that they don't pick the eggs. They come out huh. and then you can collect them on this side. That's awesome. I made a mistake, I made this too small so they can actually reach it, but the idea would be that you could extend it and then you just, you know, it rolls out. Yeah. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, normally when we have, uh, during breeding season, this is when we, when we keep them separate in these wow. boxes, so the different breeds of the box. Right now we have them cleaned out, but uh, they would be in here and that's how they breed. They'll be in here for like three weeks in a, in a row. Wow. One boy and three girls max, and then we collect the eggs, put them in the incubator. Right now we've got some new ducks here. They're just uh, about two weeks old, probably mm. about a week. Yeah, maybe about a week. Oh, this is about a week old. Can you see through? Oh, little duck babies. Yeah. And they're beautiful eggs. So for us, the eggs is the most important. So that's the primary reason behind having the ducks is for the eggs and the chicken too. Yeah. Makes sense, chicken and uh, we don't slaughter. We slaughter only once a year, but we only slaughter uh, the boys. Okay. Because when we have too many, then uh, it starts to become a raid party. Ah. <laughs> and that's not really good for the girls. <laughs> they don't really lay well after that. Funny enough. <laughs> this is a very high uh, protein. Um, what do you call it? Algae? It's called nadang. Yeah, it's like an oh. algae, yeah, but very high in protein. So we grow this. It grows really fast and give that to the chickens and the ducks to eat. Wow. And at the same time, we're growing these very delicious Ooh. snails here. Okay. The Thais love it. Yeah, they absolutely love it. That's amazing. And we use them at the restaurant, so some of the people pay good money for these. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's How deep does this water go? Oh, it's just a uh, 10 centimeter. Okay. Yeah. This that's whole thing awesome. we have to redo now, so it's just it's all broken apart. Hmm. So we're gonna have to rebuild this whole area. Awesome. A lot of chilies, we love chilies. Wow. We love eating spicy. We have our own, uh, we do our own jalapenos. So we have beautiful jalapenos as well. We've got these uh, these other really nice chilies here. Oh yeah. And then we've got the Thai chilies and the green ones, the red ones. You know the ones that you eat with your papaya salad. Oh yeah. And then I think wow. I have some peppers too. This came from Switzerland. Really nice ones. Delicious. Fill them with some goat cheese. Wow. Super tasty. Yeah. yeah this is my wife's, my wife's area. She loves all this vegetable stuff. Some more, all kinds of vegetables down yeah, there. Yeah, it looks like some cherry tomatoes in there. Yeah, they were wild grown. I wonder how much of a difference the shade netting makes. Oh, a lot. It reduces so temperature. Herbs. So here you have coriander and celery. This okay. is celery. So celery doesn't want to have uh, direct sunlight. Okay. Much. So that's it. But well, now uh, this is the end of the season. And we're going to have to chop this all down and uh, do it new again for the rainy season. Oh, before the rainy season. Yeah, so this is kind of the end of it. It's okay. already been all harvested, as you can see. You yeah. Know, it's, it's just the last, the last bits. So will you till this? Like till up the land? Yeah. yeah. Take okay. it all out, plow it. That'll be fun. And fresh. And it goes all the way, right? But yeah. here is, this is where you have celery and those herbs that don't want, like there's uh, onions and all. Okay. Don't want direct sunlight too much. 
A lot of stuff grows wild here, you know, this is also some kind of a pumpkin. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, over here we got the, uh, this is where we sort through the, uh, the cashew apples, choose the good ones from the bad ones, remove the nut. Yeah, so we're just separating what's good. The ones that we can use for uh, cider, we throw in the water bath to clean it. Not, uh, you see these ones already, juice is coming out. So what we're doing is, if you come here, <laughs> got this big bucket here. If you, look, if you had a 4D camera, you could actually smell this. You get <laughs> drunk just by looking. So you have these, you have that. It's a very thick mass. There's water in it. There's a lot of alcohol contained already under. Yeah, so we stir this, get the alcohol nicely fermented in here. You see here, you can see that. If you go down there, it's all... Oh yeah. If you took a cup of this, you'll be drunk right away. Hmm. <laughs> Not a bad idea. <laughs> okay. This is where the ducks live. And they're all free roaming at the end of the day. Yeah. This cage is put up pretty much just to keep the dogs out. So yeah, the ducks come, they, they roam free here. And they go out, as you can see over there. Wow. Right and then they come back at night to eat. Normally this is filled with water. This year it's incredibly dry. You actually have to walk out. That was never wow. the case before. That would normally be water, but right now. The water, the water rate that goes out into the little tree. And then, then at night they come back in. Yeah. Okay, so this is the this is now the the cashew juice. So we press this, uh, we squeeze it of the good apples. Uh, we're basically we added uh, cider yeast a little bit. We're trying to see how much you know what we need the quantities to make it uh, to make it into a cider. There's nothing actually online on cashew cider, so we're trying something new. I figure this is the batch from last from yesterday. So it's about 10 liters that we get in a day. Uh, from what we collect, so this is quite a lot, and all the bad ones is even more, which uh, we then distill. Yeah, so this will take about 10 days. Um, we have to shake it every day. We've got a little bit of a uh, what do you call this one? Um, you know, when the gas comes out, so it blocks here, so if nothing goes in, it's got to be wow. tight sealed. Um, but the gas can come out if it does, so yeah, <laughs> keep this here. Tequila here at the bar, yeah. Tequila is him always at the bar, <laughs> and we'll see how this goes ten days from now. Awesome. Right here.